As of 2021, the Canadian Food Inspection Agency has four official grades for eggs in Canada. Unfortunately, by the time you see them on your plate, they could be over two months old or older. I'm not really looking forward to winter. It's going to be cold and I don't like the cold. I'm a fish for okay, Over here, chill, girls, gentlemen. Where's the, where's the egg basket? Um, where'd it go? All right. Going to collect the eggs, going to collect the eggs. Hi, chickens. Good morning, ladies. One egg. Two egg, three egg, plenty of eggs, plenty, plenty, plenty. Oh, they're warm. Yuck. We were so excited about our garden and it just, it, it didn't produce, ironically enough. We worked so hard at it, but as the summer got super busy and as things just I don't know. I don't know what happened between June and September, but it was all just a blur. I was working what felt like nonstop. I was going on trips for work. I was filming things and it just, it went by the wayside. So a lot of work on the homestead and a lot of the work around the house just got passed by. And unfortunately that meant the garden completely failed. This is my garden. Um, is my fly down? Nope. Oh, okay. Feels felt a breeze. Garden, dead stuff, lots of it. I'm bad at growing things. See you later. Like I killed corn. I didn't even know you could kill corn. I thought you just like pop it in the ground and it, and it grows. Same with potatoes. I just thought potatoes, you just put it, the seeds in the ground and they grow and they didn't. Despite our shortcomings and failures, we did have some things grow on the property. Granted, not everything is safe to eat. Oh, there's one. All right, let's uh, pick this guy. You know, in hindsight, I probably would have been wise to figure out whether these are gonna kill me before uh, picking them. I'm getting them on my knife because I could contaminate other, screw it. Hello, my so foraging may not be my thing. So if you're looking for advice on mushrooms, I probably shouldn't be your go-to expert. You know, I should probably be more careful with what I'm picking up. I might need uh, more safety gear. I failed at gathering mushrooms. I failed at the garden. I even failed at making apple cider. <laughs> and ripped my pants and the ladder fell while I was trying to get apples. I'm just gonna get the rest of these. Apparently my apple picking skills are not only inefficient, they're also dangerous. I spent a few hours over a couple of weeks picking apples on the property, hoping to turn them into apple cider. Just tossing them into my basket. They're gonna be made into pie. Or juice. Sorry, I shouldn't be talking about my mouth full, but Bruising them's not gonna hurt them much, really. So, I can pick as many as I can. I figured since the only thing that we were successful in growing were apples, that we should uh, make some cider. I got myself a carboy. Big ol' five count. Oh, how big is this? Let's cut some apples. Unfortunately, what I didn't account for, among other things, was how inefficient my juicer was and how many apples we'd really need to make a year's worth of cider. We both know those moments when all your worries hit again and eat your time. 
time. So let's just pretend See what it does, if anything. the apron I'm gonna see if I can turn these apples into a really good cider maybe a hard cider I'll throw it into the other garboy so much no Despite my best efforts, we really need an apple press. This method didn't produce nearly enough cider. Of course, with winter looming, processing wood for the stove became top priority. What the? What? What? That is, if I could pull myself together. It doesn't. In. In. There we go. Safety first. Let's see if... Yeah. Alright. <laughs> oh, we have the stuff on. What's happening? I wish this was a joke and that I could actually get it started. Ah! Among many other things, probably one of the most valuable lessons we learned over this past year was persistence. Despite failure after failure, from the greenhouse to the garden, to losing literally dozens of animals, we pushed on. And if you've ever raised pigs, you'll know exactly what I mean by persistence. For those of you who have never raised pigs, uh, if they're not fenced in properly, they tend to get out. Heck, even sometimes when they are fenced in properly, they get out. But when they get caught, they, they scream bloody murder. This fall, the pigs were rehomed to a new family, and I'm told that their new best friend is a 600-pound boar. We'll get pigs again when we have a better fencing solution. Everybody got dressed up, but I knew I'd messed up, so I had to fess up that all I really wanted was just to get drunk as hell. Luckily, so far this fall has been pretty uneventful. We pared down our animals, just 20 or so chickens, and a few free-ranging rabbits. Their choice, not mine. I really need to fix that latch on the coop, but otherwise, as you can see by the stack wood, we're pretty much ready for winter. Just about the only thing left to do now is to pick up our half side of beef. I have spent a large portion of my life trying to figure out what food is good for me and what isn't. And I have found in the last few years that I need to eat better food. And a lot of people think that eating better food means eating prettier foods or foods that are fancier or more expensive, but in reality, it just means more high quality foods. I have Trevor Welsh here with me today. We're gonna check out his farm or his family farm with some Angus beef cattle and some of the corn that they've got, a bunch of stuff going on. So I am looking forward to it, Trevor. Thank you very much. Oh, my pleasure. This year I got to visit Trevor at Garvey Farms and we saw all of his cows and he said that I should try out some of his Angus beef. Most of beef farming is that what you're doing. Just like, yeah. I, I like to see all of our females be at least two years, like 24 months before they have a calf. And that's fairly standard across the industry. Like they're, they've, they're pretty well done growing by then. There's, there's a couple that they're, they're, they're 
They're not nasty, but if you don't pay attention to them, they might actually bite you a little bit. <laughs> okay. They might, uh, they might bump you just to... <laughs> After making an ass of myself during the visit... His name is Mo. He's our coyote protector. And subsequently, after a few months of waiting for the cow to be sent to the butcher, it was time. Yesterday, we picked up over 500 pounds of beef. All right, I'll just start carting to start. Beef, 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 beef. Just don't always hold the bottom. Ooh, fresh ground beef. Right on top. <laughs> Trevor brought us our beef in boxes and a few gifts for us as well, but we're really excited. In fact, tonight, Nicole has actually cooked a roast for our dinner, so we get to try it for the first time. But there's such a quality difference when you shop local, when you have food with the minerals from the soil around you, when your vegetables are local and fresh, your eggs, your beef, your pork, when all of your meat comes from around you, you're going to feel so much better. So we feel better when we eat properly and when we eat fruits and vegetables that are sourced locally or that we grow ourselves. There's such a point of pride that when we grow our own foods, be it uh, carrots, raspberries, strawberries, anything, even a small potato, we are in potato country in Carlton County. You just feel so much better when you can grow it yourself. Not only does it taste better, but you have that point of pride that you made this, you grew this. That's how I feel every time I walk out to the chicken coop and pick up an egg, crack it for breakfast. Now, granted, it was weird at first. Now, for most people, you don't really get the warm egg in the morning, and it's weird because that just came out of the bottom of a chicken, but that is fresh food. And it's still weird to me. I've never hunted, I've never been a hunter. so butchering something and taking that meat and then eating it like soon after or even fresh is just a weird like mind thing for me but it's delicious it is so much better because it's local it is around you and it's the way that we are supposed to eat so i'm really excited to eat more local produce eat more local beef and i'm excited for this year and this coming year to learn more from local farmers to learn more from local producers be it an apple orchard be it a organic farmer, be it an egg farmer, a pig farmer, I want to learn more about my food and I want to continue to. So, so if you know any farmers that would like us to visit so that we can film, so that we can learn more and, and show off some of the amazing local producers that we have, not only in Carlton County, but in New Brunswick. I want to showcase so many local producers. I've visited some farms already. I've had the opportunity to see what products and what incredible produce that local producers make and I want to meet more of you. I want to meet more people in the process. I want to meet butchers and small markets and I just want to come to you. I want to learn so much this year and over the winter time it's going to be a little hard to get around and to get fresh produce but I'm excited for the spring and summer to be able to grow our own food but also to partner with a lot of people and hopefully a lot of businesses so that we can show off and we can say hey this is local New Brunswick. This is local Carlton County produce. Now winter is finally upon us and we've hunkered down to more or less hibernate for the season. But nevertheless, we're excited. We're already planning for next year and we're more excited than ever for 2022. And we hope you'll join us. Sincerely, thank you for watching and thank you for following our journey regardless the number of times that we screw up. To keep up to date with what we've got going on and to see behind the scenes footage. Welcome to the first official day of filming for Homegrown. Follow us on social media or visit our website at homegrownshow.ca. Merry Christmas, everyone.